16. Assuming that no equilibria other than dissolution are involved, calculate the concentration of all solute species in each of the following solutions of salts in contact with a solution containing a common ion. And then show that the changes in the initial concentrations of the common ions can be neglected. Okay. And then we have CdOH2. That's a solid. And they're saying that it's in a solution that's buffered at a pH of 10.995. So I had to go into the back of a textbook to find out what the KSP value, the solubility product of CdOH2 is, right? Since we're talking about a solid that's being dissolved, it's undergoing dissolution, it has to have a KSP. So the KSP for CdOH2 is 5.9 times 10 to the negative 15th. But what is a KSP without you know, finding the balanced equation. We got to find it, right? So start with the solid, CD, OH2, that's a solid. And this will come to equilibrium because we're dealing with K values of the two ions, right? So the break between CD and OH2 is between the CH and the OH, CD and the OH, right? OH is hydroxide, polyatomics always stay together. So we have CD, and then OH. But the thing is, is that I need those charges, right? What is the charge of the ions? Well, you could use the crisscross method, right? You had one cadmium for every two hydroxides. This one crisscrosses up telling me that the hydroxide is a negative one. This two crisscrosses up telling me that cadmium was a plus two. So plus two, negative one. We had one cadmium, so one CD, but we had two OHs, so I have to put a two in front of the OH. Anytime that you have charges, those are aqueous, AQ, AQ. And now we're cool. We're gonna put this off to the side for a little bit. And then we are going to use it to find the KSP general formula. Remember, the KSP formula is this. It's just equal to the products raised to the coefficients. So our KSP would be KSP equals the concentration of CD, two plus, times the concentration of the OH minus. But just be careful, you gotta raise it to the coefficients. There were no number in front of the cadmium, that means that there was one of them. So I could raise the cadmium to the first, but that's the same thing. But then I have a two in front of the OH. So I do have to take the OH and raise it to the second power. We know that the KSP is 5.9 times 10 to the negative 15th, but I don't know what the cadmium or the hydroxide concentration is. So that's when I'm gonna start using variables. However, this is where you go back into the question just to see if you have any other information or any ions that may be influencing what we're starting with here. Now they did tell us that we had a pH of 10.995. Well, why would they give us a pH value? Well, we have to think to ourselves, can I go from a pH to a CD concentration? Nah. But can I go from a pH to an OH minus concentration? Yep, that was last chapter. Right? We can go from a pH to an OH concentration. We have to use the formulas down below. Right? I could go from a pH to a pOH to the OH minus. And that's what we're going to do. So we're going to use the first equation to get it into a pOH. So I'm just going to say pH plus pOH equals 14. That's a formula that either you got to memorize or maybe your teacher or professor might give it to you on a test. But the pH was 10.995. So if we want to find the pOH, I'm just going to subtract this. 0.995. Okay, goody. So now I have the pOH equaling 14 minus 10.995, 3. 0 0.005. Now I'm going to use this number to find out the hydroxide concentration. So I'm going to bring this up. And it's 10 raised to the negative pH. So it's basically 10 raised to the negative 3.005. And that's my 
OH minus. So 10 raised to the negative 3.005. And since this, this is not the answer, I'm going to try not to round, but I'll cut it off after maybe four decimals. 9.8855. 9.8855. Times 10 to the negative fourth molarity. Now, it says that this compound was in that solution. So, this concentration was already there in the beginning because it came directly from that pH. So, this has to be the initial concentration of the OH. So, whenever they give you that, we have to go back and we have to do an ice table. I know. I know. So, let's just do it quickly. Here's my little thingamajig. Beauty. Let's just maybe pull this. There we go. So ICE. Remember, solids don't get included for the case and purposes of this chart. No one cares about what's going on with that. The solid. And the initial hydroxide concentration is what we had here. So 9.8855 times 10 to the negative fourth. We did not start off with any cadmium, so I'm going to say zero. Remember, the change is the plus x or the minus x. Since we started with nothing, we can only go up from there. So this would be plus 1x, which is the same as just plus x. And this would be plus 2x, or 2 times x. Then equilibrium, you're just Combining these two, so 0 plus x is x. This would be 9.8855 times 10 to the negative fourth plus 2x. And these are now your, your um, equilibrium values that we're going to plug in in our formula. So the cadmium is going to be just x, and the hydroxide is going to be that 9.8855 times 10 to the negative fourth, and then let me move this over a little bit, plus 2x. But now here's the thing. If we leave this plus 2x in there, that's the change in the initial concentration, we're going to have to do the quadratic equation. And we try to, um, you know, get away with it if we can. So we always assume first. What we're going to assume is that since this KSP is so small, that means that the change from the initial to the final is not great. So much so that this number, the beginning number, is not even going to budge. So by doing that, we get rid of this plus 2x. Then we just check uh, just to see if we you know, did the right thing. That's the 5% rule. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just do the math, and then we're going to see what happens. I'm going to get rid of this first. And then let's just work on, work on with the math. Maybe I will put this over here just so that I have more room. Okay, there we go, beauty. Okay. So 5.9 times 10 to the negative 15th equals, we have uh, x times the 9.88. 5, 5, oh boy, <laughs> times 10 to the negative fourth, and that's squared. So let's just do this math first, right? So 9.8855 times 10 to the negative fourth squared. So I'm just going to erase that number. And we get 9.77, try not to round, 2, 3, one one we'll just put one 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 times 10 to the negative seventh solve for x you're going to divide on both sides by that number so divide by 9.77231 times 10 to the negative seventh 9.77231 times 10 to the negative seventh this will cancel and we are left with just the x value so 5.9 times 10 to the negative 15th divided by 9.77231 times 10 to the negative 7th. And uh, 
I guess five sig figs. Does anybody care? No. 6.0375 times 10 to the negative ninth. And that's similarity. But first, let's do the 5% rule. Let's see if this passes the 5% rule. What you're going to do is you're going to take your x value, divide it by the initial, which is the 9.8855 times 10 to the negative fourth, and times it by 100. If this answer is 5 or less, then we assumed correctly. But if it's more than 5, we have to go back and do the quadratic equation. So 6.0375 times 10 to the negative ninth divided by 9.8855 times 10 to the negative fourth times 100. And yeah, I mean, not even 1%. So we're good. So we're going to leave this as the x and that similarity. And now we need to calculate those concentrations. So we just go back to the equilibrium line. So keep in mind that the cadmium was just the x value. So that's the 6.0375 times 10 to the negative ninth molarity. And then when we do the hydroxide, it was the 9.8855 times 10 to the negative fourth plus two times that x value. So when we do the math, we just have to plug it in. So 9.8855 times 10 to the negative fourth plus two times 6.0375, uh, yep, times 10 to the negative ninth. Is it even going to move it? Uh, but yeah, 9.8856, cool, times 10 to the negative fourth. And that's molarity. Maybe I could squeeze this over. Squeeze. M. And that is your answer. And I know that I'm writing it in the corner. Let me see if I, maybe I can just scooch this over. There we go. Beautiful. And those are your answers, guys. Uh, thank you so much. I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. What is this random negative doing here? Uh, I honestly have no idea. No idea. But anyway, <laughs> thank you so much, and I will uh, I'll talk to you later. Okay, bye-bye.